Hi and welcome back to the Polymer Clay channel. So firstly, I just want to say thank you to my 369 subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, I started this channel about six months ago now and it's slowly growing. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm so, so happy that I've got an audience. And the way I look at it is how many people can I fit in my house? Well, to be honest, not many. So 369 of you watch my channel and um, if I had that many people in front of me, wow, I'd be scared. So yeah, what I'm trying to get at is um, it's a lot of people to me. And I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there with hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but I am happy with my 369 of you. Um, and to be honest, you know, it's a growing audience and the more I do good, the more I get, I guess. Yeah, I just want to say thanks. So today I'm going to show you how to make a wall decoration. Um, it's going to have some writing on it and it's going to be specific to uh, a film I used to like when I was a kid. And it's going to have a shoe on it. So there we go. What is it going to be? Bright red shoe, if that helps. So here we go. Okay, what I've got here is Fimo Soft and this is in black. And then I've got some scrap here, which is what I used for my um, masquerade mask. So this is the leftover of that. And I'm gonna use the rest of it on uh, this video. So this is gonna be for the shoe. This is gonna be for the writing. And then I've got an array of glitters and of course, mica powders. So to start with, this is Paper Mania and this is Tinsel Red. This is an unbranded one. Um, I'm not sure where it came from, but it says Red Rose. This, these are quite fine glitters. And then I've got a nice chunky glitter as well. Then I've got some red mica powders. These are from the Colour Shack. And again, this is Truffle and Met Red. And then I've got an unbranded gold. So I'm gonna use a mixture of these things to create um, the design. And then I've got my tools here. Tissue blade, uh, dotting tool, craft knife, acrylic roller, my red plastic tool for marks and finally a paintbrush for the mica powders. Now for this tutorial what you're going to need is something quite big in terms of what you can make it on. So I've got a large tie here that I can move around and this will fit in the oven. So this is governed by the size that I'm going to make it. So it is going to be this um, length. And I'm going to do the writing and then I'm going to do uh, the shoe in the red. Okay, so I've made some of the writing. Um, I'm not quite happy with this one yet, so I might change the A on there because I think the uh, shape is not quite rounded enough, so I might change that one. Um, to create, as you saw, to create an O, it can be done in two ways. So I'm just gonna show you how I can do that. So you can either make um, a flat edge like this, stretch it a little to get it to the size that you're looking for, and then simply the two together like this 
and then smoothing it out just gently by pressing it together by keeping the shape um, and then eventually that seam will go it hasn't completely gone on this one yet um, but it might be um, as I smooth it out um, and create further decoration it should go on that one the other way you can do it is cut a diagonal here and then an opposite diagonal and pop that round like that so that's a rough sort of idea um, obviously it then creates a diagonal cut rather than um, a straight cut I find that sometimes the diagonal cut stays together better and then you can roll it and smooth it out and you don't see it so well um, afterwards whereas the flat one as you saw it does take a little bit of time to get them to stick together so sometimes it is easier doing it that way so I've got some of these out as I said I don't like the A much um, at the moment because I think it's a little bit out of shape so I'm just going to change that now I'm just going to slice off a little bit here pop it back on straighten it up and then get it to the shape that I'm looking for and that's a bit better so I'm just going to carry on now and do the rest of the lettering um, and this is going to spell home now as you saw I make them all close together and that is just so that I can get the uh, perspective right um, or the sizing should I say um, and that way you can get the capitals where they should be and obviously the lowercase as well so I'm just creating the H so by doing it this way you can see the width um, of both sides of the H and whether you've got them right and then you can just check it with sort of looking at it as to whether it's right for you and then I'm just going to get a middle bit pop that in the middle here and there's the H now of course I want to have something a little bit more swirly here so I'm going to create an H with different design on one side and I do that by pinching as you saw curl to go outwards I'm going to do another O I do cut quite a big piece off so I can get the um, the width that I'm looking for um, and again I test it many times to check also check in the other O that I've done as well to make sure now I am going to do this one flat as I've done the other one flat tend to make them in a similar way if I'm doing the writing um, and then just because this is soft FIMO just very gently pressing it and smoothing it together um, if you put too much pressure on it soft FIMO will literally squash um, and then you won't be able to get it back in its shape so I'm doing the same sort of motion if you do find that you press it too hard and it does go too thin just hold the edges out and then press together and you'll be able to get that thickness back in the area that you want so I'm just smoothing that round now as you saw because I've just been talking it doesn't take very long at all so I'm going to pop that in there now I do I can see already that this is a little too big so I am going to unfortunately cut a piece out and start again and then just by the same motion pressing it all together now I am running out of space so I'm just going to pop all of these letters together Okay, what I'm going to do now is just add some decoration and some detail, a little bit of mica powder and some glitter, and then this is going to go in the oven, and then I'll start work on the shoe. Okay, so I've done some textures, little dots and little lines. You won't be able to see this at the minute. Um, black FIMO is actually really hard to film, so no matter how much light I've got here, probably won't see it but when I start putting the marker powder on and the glitter I'm going to highlight all the little areas and this is why I do create some texture because otherwise it may look a bit boring so I'm just going to add a few more lines on this part here and on the P as well and I'm going to 
do the decoration. Okay, so here we have it. I've stood up at the minute because I'm really struggling uh, to get this on something that is going to support it because obviously all these letters are all individual. So I've been sat here for about four hours trying to work out how I'm going to get these all together and how I'm going to get them to look right. I'm really happy with the shoe so far. Um, I'm going to leave that out of shot. You're not going to be able to see it yet. No, I'm kidding. 
so there's the shoe and so what I'm going to do is work out with these um, circular bits of clay see if that's going to work pop them in in a different place and see if that will support it um, the other idea is having a thicker piece of clay which again is black and then putting supports behind this to see if it'll work um, ideally I don't want a background for this so I don't want to stick it on something I want it to hang um, as just the words and I'm going to see if I can do that now so here we go Thanks for watching the tutorial, so I'm going to show you what it looks like now. I've left it on the back end of the tile because I'm a bit scared, if I'm honest, to take it out in a minute. So, um, here we go. So there's the top. It's absolutely massive. So I've left it on here for now, um, and then what I'm going to do is take it off, and hopefully it all stays all together. So, and I wanted the P and the L to kind of come off a bit to make it a bit more interesting. I was going to try and put another circle under the P and the L but to be honest I, I decided not to in the end. So now I'm going to try and pull it off and hopefully it all stays together. Well that took way longer than I wanted it to but I got it off and I got a hole in the top so here we go. So it's hanging by a string. Um, I had to put it there because the centre of balance wasn't right so I tried to hang it near the put the holes near the no and it just wasn't having none of it so yeah I put it in the middle and the idea is is that it hangs and like I said I didn't want anything in this bit here I wanted it nice and clear and there it is so this is how not only do you create a red shoe from polymer clay but you create a massive great big wall decoration Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. So with my 369 subscribers, I'd like to know you. So tell me in the comments below, who are you, what you do, why you watch me, and if you make something, let me know. You can Twitter me, that's not right, is it? You can tweet me, no, that's not right, is it? Uh, you can tweet me at Gail Jones and tell me what you're making. I like a community, so tell me who you are in the comments, like I said. Um, tell me what you do and introduce, introduce yourself to everybody else who follows me. Um, this is not all about me, this is all about community. I'm doing well. My channel, I started it 
um, to challenge me. I'd lost my mojo, I didn't know what to make, I make a lot of bears and I sell a lot of bears but I wasn't enjoying it as much. And so I thought, hell, you know, start a channel, make stuff, challenge stuff. I'm obviously challenging myself for content and as much as I am thinking, wow, I actually made that, that's weird. Did anyone see my um, seahorse thing? Yeah, I can't believe I made that even now, to be honest. Even though the tail went in and then went out and then went in again, but it's just a long story. This is rambly. Apologise, but I've got a lot to say today. You know, I just feel that this is the last video that I'll be doing where I am living at the moment. It's kind of an end of a bit for me, end of an era, new start, fresh area to film in. It's going to be nice to just be able to leave all my stuff where it is and not have to rebuild it every time. Carry on watching. Now it's um. Australian, so I don't know if I sound Australian, do I? Alright mate? No, we're not, we're not. Hell no. It took me a while. Translation is done. I'm trying to create a community of people who all love polymer clay but also have a strange personality like me. And then I turn it on to me and I'm like, mm, no, no, that's weird. That's weird. 13 minutes this has taken me so far and I've rambled. So here we go. Hi, welcome back to the Pond Clay channel. So today I'm going to show you how to make a, a wool decoration. Now I've said this before, I mean wool. No, I oh dear, I'm not I when I say wool it sounds like wool. It's a wool decoration. Should we address my haircut yet? The hairdresser came at me with razors and I was a bit concerned. There she was buzzing away at the back of my head thinking, oh my god, what's going to happen? Well, this happened. So I lost two and a half inches. And although I've lost all the ratty bits, so you know, you've probably seen some outtakes where I've just gone ratty, ratty, rat, rat. That'll be why, because my hair is very fine and this is not about gladly, so I'm really sorry. It's a ramble. Oops. I did tell her. I said, you know, it will grow back. So. Bad face day, I can just do this. 